Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King's morning prayer service. This is Thursday, March 4th. The opening sentence from Psalm 51. Turn your face from my sins and blot out all my misdeeds. The confession of sin found on page 11. Dearly beloved, the scriptures teach us to acknowledge our many sins and offenses, not concealing them from our Heavenly Father, but confessing them with humble and obedient hearts, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. We ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before Almighty God, but especially when we come together in his presence to give thanks for the great benefits we have received at his hands, to declare his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things which are necessary for our life and for our salvation. Therefore, draw near with me to the throne of heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. We have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, desires not the death of sinners, but that they may turn from their wickedness and live. He has empowered and commanded his ministers to pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all who truly repent and genuinely believe his holy gospel. For this reason, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that our present deeds may please him, the rest of our lives may be pure and holy, and that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lenten Antiphon. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. The Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, hard not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness when your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. We'll now have the Psalm readings and the New Testament reading. Uh, the Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 5 and 6. They are found on pages 273 and 274. Psalm 5, we will read by half verse, and I will begin. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. 
Oh, hearken unto the voice of my calling, my King, and my God. For unto you will I make my prayer. My voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord. Early in the morning will I direct my prayer to you and will look up. For you are not a God who has pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall any evil dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand in your sight. For you hate all those who work iniquity. You shall destroy those who speak lies. The Lord will abhor the bloodthirsty and the deceitful. But as for me, through the multitude of your mercies, I will come into your house. And in reverence will I bow myself toward your holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before my face. For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their heart is eaten up with wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Declare them guilty, O God. Let them fall because of their own devices. Because of the multitude of their transgression, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all those who put their trust in you rejoice. Let them ever give thanks, because you defend them. Those who love your name shall be joyful in you. For you, Lord, will give your blessing unto the righteous. And with your favorable kindness, you will defend him as with a shield. And Psalm 6, found on page 274. O Lord, rebuke me not in your indignation. Neither chasten me in your displeasure. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are racked. My soul also is greatly troubled. But Lord, how long will you punish me? Turn, O Lord, and deliver my soul. O save me for your mercy's sake. For in death no one remembers you. And who will give you thanks from the grave? I am weary with my groaning. Every night I flood my bed and drench my couch with my tears. My eyes have become dim because of trouble. And worn away because of all my enemies. Away from me, all you who work wickedness. For the Lord has heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my petition. The Lord will receive my prayer. All my enemies shall be confounded and greatly vexed. And they shall be turned back and put to shame suddenly. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 14th chapter, the first verse. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard about the fame of Jesus, <clears throat> and he said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He has been raised from the dead. That is why these miraculous powers are at work in him. For Herod had seized John and bound him and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had been saying to him, it is not lawful for you to have her. And though he wanted to put him to death, he feared the people because they held him to be a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company and pleased Herod, so that he promised with an oath to give her whatever she might ask. Prompted by her mother, she said, Give me the head of John the Baptist here on a platter. And the king was sorry, but because of his oaths and his guests, he commanded it to be given. 
he sent and had John beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on a platter and given to the girl, and she brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took the body and buried it, and they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. He made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, it's a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. And when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent around to all that region and brought to him all who were sick and implored him that they might only touch the fringe of his garment, and as many as touched it were made well. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's canticle is the Benedictus S. Domine, which is found on page 18. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, and glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O oh God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. The collect of the day, which is for Thursday after the second Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you know that we have no power in ourselves to help ourselves. Keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities that may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts that may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, time for prayer and thanksgiving. When we can, Lord, help us to walk straight lives down straight paths according to your will and according to your purpose. Guide and direct us this day and help us to be pleasing in your sight. Amen. your goodness being made new every day um lord we uh we pray that as we go out today that you would give us um your strength your mercy your grace uh, and that you'd empower us by the power of your holy spirit to do and act and think the way that you would have us do that lord and to who you are Oh, merciful Father, you have taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. Look with pity on the sorrows of your servants, Jonathan, Daisy, and Jerry. Remember them, O oh Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, I thank you for the many blessings you have poured over our church family and, and the healings that we have seen happen in our midst. Uh, I ask especially uh, for your healing pleasance for Father Sam Tomlinson, a good friend in Natchez. Um, he has lost the ability to walk and um, is apparently um, pretty far down the road of losing his mental capacities. And so I ask, Lord, that you would place your healing hand on him and, and your mercy, pour your mercies over his wife, Suzanne, help her to deal with this situation. Um, I also ask you to stand close, continue to stand close by Jim Foley's side. And uh, I thank you that, that you have brought him as far as you have through this battle with cancer, bladder cancer which has gone well so far and that you continue to comfort and strengthen his wife, Susan. Um, all those in our church family who are staying home and healing, um, that you would continue to bless and heal them. Bless and heal those we have on our prayer list and those we carry in our hearts. Bless and heal each one of us. 
All these things we ask in your name, Lord. Lord, we lift up our parish, ask you to continue to bless us. We pray for our diocese of the Southwest. In particular, we pray for the consecration in two days of Stephen Ty as our new bishop. We ask, Lord, your blessing to be upon Stephen and Tricia and the Ty family and our diocesan family. We pray for your protection uh, for those who are traveling to El Paso for the consecration, either by road or by air. We pray for our archbishop who will be in attendance. Ask you to continue to protect him and strengthen him, give him the energy uh, he needs to, to do all that you've called him to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are worthy servants give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your measurable love and your redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. A prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.